Examine the knee with both legs exposed well above the knee. Have the patient remove long pants because rolling up the legs of long pants does not permit an adequate exam. If symptoms permit, begin with the patient standing. Assess patellar alignment by inspecting and palpating them for the proper forward-facing position. With the patient supine, note key anatomic landmarks, including the patella, tibial shaft, tibial tubercle, also called the tibial tuberosity, which attaches the patella via the patellar tendon, and quadriceps muscle, which attaches to the patella via the quadriceps tendon. Look for soft tissue swelling and deformities. Also, inspect the skin for discoloration and lesions and compare the affected side with the other normal side. To detect subtle atrophy, measure and compare the circumference of both thighs. To ensure that the thighs are measured at the same point, measure the distance of that measurement point from a fixed bony landmark, such as the superior border of the patella. Gently feel the knee for warmth. The back of your hand may be more sensitive than the front. Palpate for a joint effusion on the sides of the patella, and particularly over the superior patella, where joint effusions are sometimes most evident. To detect effusions, look for swelling at the patellar margin. To help differentiate soft tissue swelling from joint effusion, press on the soft tissue superior to the patella in a downward direction, which tends to move excess joint fluid from the suprapatellar pouch to the underside of the patella. Then press on the patella, looking for belotment. Then palpate for tenderness over the bones, the joints, and then soft tissues. Use a single digit to better distinguish tenderness over the joint line, indicating ligamentous or intraarticular disorders, from adjacent soft tissue tenderness. To help detect discomfort caused by an abnormal patellofemoral relationship, palpate the underside of the patella, medially and laterally. To identify tenderness of the patellar tendon, palpate the tendon between the tibial tubercle and the inferior border of the patella. Test passive range of motion, including the maximal degree of flexion, and identify any deviation of the patella from its normal tracking as the knee is passively extended. The extensor mechanism includes the quadriceps muscle, quadriceps tendon, patella, and patellar tendon that connect with the tibial tubercle. Disruption of the mechanism at any of these structures, as occurs with complete muscle or ligament tears or fractures, will impair extension of the knee. Test the extensor mechanism by asking the patient to actively raise the entire lower extremity with the knee extended. The ability to do this rules out functionally significant disruption of the mechanism. If patient's symptoms permit, do provocative testing for ligamentous laxity of the medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, and the crossed anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. Compare one side to the other. Test the collateral ligaments using varus and valgus stress tests. To do these tests, cradle the patient's heel against your hip. This leaves both hands free to hold or move the knee. Have the patient relax the leg muscles as much as possible, and then assess the degree of stability while applying valgus stress, knee pushed inwards, ankle pulled out, and varus stress, knee pulled outwards, and ankle pushed in. The Lachman test assesses stability of the anterior cruciate ligament. Flex the knee slightly with the patient's muscles relaxed, then pull the tibia anteriorly while stabilizing the femur with your other hand. With a stable ligament, motion should stop suddenly and sharply against an apparently fixed endpoint. The sudden stopping is similar to how, for example, a curled tie suddenly stops when it is pulled to its full length. Stability of the anterior cruciate ligament can be further assessed with the anterior drawer test, and stability of the posterior cruciate ligament can be assessed with the posterior drawer test. To do these, flex the knee to around 90 degrees, then sit on the patient's foot to prevent it from moving and have her relax the hamstring muscles. For the anterior drawer test, put your fingers behind the tibia and your thumbs over the tibial plateau. Pull forward. For the posterior drawer test, push backward. If the ligaments are stable, moving the tibia will also move the femur. This position with 90 degrees of flexion is also the best position to palpate for tenderness along the medial and lateral joint lines to detect injury to the medial and lateral menisci.